All right, guys, well, I'm back today with one of the nicest AR-15s I've ever shot, the brand new Blackout Defense Quantum Mark II AR-15. This has some of the nicest feature set as well as precision machining I've ever seen in an AR-15, especially one that's complete from the factory like this. Blackout Defense is an aerospace company that's delved into the AR-15 world, making triggers, lowers assemblies, barrels, and complete rifles. And this brand new Quantum Mark II really is one of the most impressive AR-15s I've ever shot. Today, we're going to be doing an overview of this AR. You'll be seeing updates in the future and more in-depth reviews on certain components. But this is kind of the first shots and overview of this rifle, where I talk about the specs and features and initial performance down at the range. Now let's dig into these details. So along with that feature set and incredible machining comes a more elevated price point than I normally look at on the channel. But this is a real interesting AR-15, and I'm super glad they sent it out to the channel for us to look at. It starts at about $1979, so right at about two grand, going up to $2,100, depending on the feature set and barrel length you select. You'll be able to go through a drop down menu on their website and kind of navigate it very simply to pick your color and a couple of other basic features about this rifle. But all of them are going to have all of the features that I talk about today, minus kind of the barrel length you determine and the color you select. The other thing I want to discuss is they have included a coupon code 704 Tactical for $100 off your rifle, and they also offer free shipping. So with the price out of the way and kind of your understanding of where we're starting, let's start at the front of the rifle and work our way to the back and talk about the specs and features and performance down at the range. So the first thing you'll notice is the compensator located on the front, and this is their Horizons compensator that they machine in-house. This is an impressive comp that does a really good job of mitigating recoil. And if you understand the AR-15, you know there is not a lot of recoil, making it perfect for everyday shooters. But when you start to tune the gun correctly with the gas system and buffer system, as well as at a really nice compensator, the recoil impulse evaporates and becomes non-existent, and that is what's happened to this rifle. When you pull the trigger, it barely moves, making it perfect for competition, long-range shooting, speed shooting, and personal defense. The list goes on and on why you would want a light recoiling rifle, and this comp really helps do the job. It also has gas ports located on the top, evenly spaced out at about 25 degrees, keeping everything really flat, but not overly compensated. This is precision machined and precision tuned to help your build be as fast as possible. And the other cool thing about this is it doesn't dump a bunch of gas back at you. So it's really nice. I've had some compensators before that do a good job of controlling recoil impulse, but it just starts throwing gas and it's really uncomfortable and hard to shoot really loud. This is still a little bit loud, but it does an amazing job of keeping that gas to the sides and not back at the shooter. Again, while controlling muzzle rise and recoil impulse. You can also get this rifle with the Dead Air Silencer's key mount muzzle device, and I believe you can get that pinned and welded on some of their shorter barrel options. That's going to allow you to still make the overall length. So if you have a Dead Air Silencer, that may be a good option for you. I don't, so I selected the 16 inch version. We'll probably be pulling this comp off to suppress it in the future, but right now we're gonna leave it on as it comes just to test out everything. Now this is attached to a premium barrel and this is where that rifle starts taking it up to the next level that you're not gonna find in any other rifle company that I've seen. The attention, the detail in every single aspect of this build, fitment, finishing and performance. And this barrel is awesome. It's made out of 416R stainless steel. They're gun drilled and reamed and then they're going to be 5R rifling with a 1 in 8 twist. So incredibly, incredibly accurate and good quality barrels. These are going to be 223 wild barrels, which can handle the pressure of a 556, yet give you more accuracy like a 223. So this really is going to be a tack driver of a rifle. I'll talk quickly about accuracy. This thing works. I've shot it out to about 150 yards, not much past that for this initial overview, but it was putting them in really tight groups off the side of my truck, not even bench rested. It almost felt like cheating this thing was accurate. We will be doing a more accuracy test in the future, uh, depending on how things go, but guys, accuracy is not going to be an issue out of this AR-15. It is a premium barrel with a really good chamber and then really good rifling. This is just a very slick setup. 
So I'm not quite sure if you guys can see these, but you'll notice some cuts in the barrel right here. And this is a really unique and interesting feature that I've never seen before in a barrel. These are actually strategically placed linear expansion rings that control the heat growth of the barrel during heavy use. And trust me, you're gonna be using this very heavily because you're gonna dump rounds through it and it's going to build up heat. When it builds up heat, these guys are going to allow the barrel to expand to just work a lot better and improve accuracy over time. This is a nice detail on a premium barrel that I've never seen before, and it's really indicative of the entire build of the rifle. Just when you think they're done, they added something a little bit extra, and that kind of harkens back to their roots as an aerospace company. Now, I actually went to school to be an aerospace engineer, and after the first year, I switched to the mechanical engineering program, and I'm actually a mechanical engineer by my day job. Now, when I switched, part of the reason why I switched was because the tolerancing and level of preciseness that you needed to be an aerospace engineer was mind boggling. And you can see that attention to detail put into this rifle. So you can tell engineers really went through every aspect of the AR-15 and said, where can we improve? and then improved upon it. And that's evident in every aspect of this build. Uh, that's kind of why I switched to mechanical engineering. I love the design and aspects of things, but the just level of preciseness that you need to work in the aerospace industry is insane. And you can tell it is evident in this AR-15 build. The barrel itself is surrounded by their M-Lock rail system. It's long enough to extend to the end of the barrel for a wide variety of placements for all of your M-Lock attachments, lights, lasers, things like that. But it stops just short of the thread so you can easily swap out your muzzle device without running into the rail system and dropping on a flat back direct thread suppressor, which is really nice, so a well thought out option. You can see the M-Lock locks located on the sides and then kind of at 45 degree offsets all over the rail system so you can really attach anything wherever you want. Now it gets really interesting because it attaches to the upper assembly in such a secure fashion. So the first thing is the locking mechanism that they use is incredibly superior than a lot of other bolt attachments that I've seen. And you can tell again the attention to detail with the red Loctite used. Not only that, there are things you can't see going on with this rail system mounting it to the receiver itself and they were specifically designed to work together. Now, they actually have locating pins buried in between the receiver and the rail system. So what they've done is drilled precision holes in both the receiver and the rail system, then pressed in pins, and those alignment pins lock everything into place to prevent rotation. This, in my opinion, is infinitely better than those alignment tabs on the other side, just by default. You can get tighter tolerances with alignment pins than you can ever could with alignment tabs located on the side, and alignment tabs tabs again are going to be machined out of that same aluminum and they're very small so they could potentially bend over time. Now alignment pins are going to be steel pins buried into the aluminum with much more structure around the pins allowing it to be a more secure locking system. So if you did want to mount a laser aiming diode to the front maybe an IR laser or something like that and you wanted to depend on it you actually could on this rail system because of the locking mechanism. Again a premium level of quality that you don't see in traditional AR-15 builds. Now moving along to the upper receiver itself, it is a premium billet upper receiver that they've machined in-house and again they specifically machined it to mate up with their rail system and their lower assembly. You can see the attention, the detail. This one does not have a forward assist. I'm not quite sure why they left it off. I've never really used them but it is an interesting design cue that they left off on this rifle build, just something to consider. You can see the opposing side of the receiver itself has all of the notches cut out to mate up with the lower very nicely. And this is pretty slick. Now I want to discuss a little bit about the interface of the lower receiver and the upper receiver as well as the components used inside the upper receiver going with the bolt and charging handle. So the next thing I'm gonna discuss is the bolt. And the bolt is like the heart of a rifle. If it's not beating, your rifle is not functioning and they've done an amazing job with this one. It's got a lot of dirt and grime. I've kind of wiped it off, but I haven't cleaned it since I started shooting this just to see the reliability. And it has been 100% reliable. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a later part of this review, but I did wanna discuss the carrier and the bolt itself. 
So the carrier itself is going to be made out of 8620 steel, and the bolt itself is actually shot peened, and it's made out of either the 9310 or Carpenter 158. And the bolts themselves are high pressure tested and individually magnetic particle inspected after the heat treat to ensure there are no micro cracks inside the bolt. Again, it's going to be NPI tested. It's got a hardened gas key, and that's going to be to those USGI specs. And then it's got the mill specs on a staking when it comes to those fasteners. It also has an enhanced extractor on there. So that extractor, the enhanced O-ring, will be able to rip out those spent shell casings. Even if you decide to use something like the steel ammo, it's going to rip those out of there just great, even if your chamber gets a little bit dirty. This is also completely covered in a black nitride finish, so it's going to add lubricity to the bolt wear itself, so it's going to slide in and out super simple, and man, does this thing run smooth. The charging handle itself is a premium ambidextrous charging handle from CMMG. Honestly, one of my favorite charging handles they offer. It is a little bit larger than most, and some people might not like how large this is. I personally like it for like a competition or defensive rifle because you can easily grab it and rip it out. Some people don't like such a large charging handle because it can get caught up on plate carriers. Something to consider, but this guy is one of my favorites, and I'm glad they've included it in the build. So while I have the rifle open, I want to show you guys a little bit about the press lock system that they have located in the lower assembly. You can see this piece right here is a material that gives with the upper assembly. So when it clamps down, it actually presses together. And it, when it locks into place, you get absolutely no play between the lower and upper assembly. I mean, guys, look at that. There is zero play making it feel like a premium, almost one piece rifle design. I've never seen something like this before. So that allows it to have a little bit of give between the upper and lower so everything fits and works reliably, yet that press lock system in the front allows it to feel like it's a one piece rifle design, such a cool innovative feature that they have on this rifle. So now I wanna discuss the lower assembly itself and this one is also available independently of the upper assembly if you just wanted to purchase a premium lower assembly built out exactly like this one or a premium trigger. I'll be reviewing the trigger a little bit more in depth in some future videos and we'll definitely be doing some more updates. But just know you guys can buy this lower assembly complete from their website. Now, when we're talking about the lower, it's actually machined out of billet 7075 aluminum. So such a quality, uh, uh, just material in general for use in a lower assembly. And then it's going to be their hard coat black anodized, or you're going to be able to get that gray Cerakote finish. And then this one's going to be equipped with the blackout defense zero trigger. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next part of this review. The other thing it's going to include is the MOE grip itself, which is swappable for pretty much anything you want. And then the Fab Defense stock. I really like this stock. It's got some nice texturing on the back. It's also really slick. If you set it on a hard surface, it's kind of rubberized, but not overly thick. It's got QD attachments on either side, and it's incredibly adjustable. Actually a really awesome stock and grip option selected for this build. I'm a big fan of that. Digging a little bit deeper, besides those surface features of this, you're going to get some really nice features built into the lower assembly itself. We've already talked about that compression pad, but you're going to get a free lifetime replacement of this pad. So if opening and closing it a couple hundred times kind of squishes out that pad, you'll be able to replace it for free. They've also reinforced critical areas around the buffer tube and trigger pin joints, which is going to be slick. You can see this beefy design back here, again, also kind of integrated into the machining of this upper receiver, allowing you more strength for a way longer life. Harder drops, if it knocks off of something, falls off something, you're going to get those reinforced areas. It also has a beveled and cut magwell for easy insertion of magazines. I've been using it a lot and it works fairly well. I've had other magwells that allow you to insert mags easier, but this is definitely improvement over the standard. And then I believe the finish is a little bit rougher, so you'll definitely feel it and see it wearing on the inside. You'll see some grooves and cuts right here, but it's actually the more you kind of use it and knock off that kind of matte finish on the magwell, the smoother it gets inserting magazines. It also has an enhanced trigger guard, which is really nice, and I like to see that machined in and built in. It looks good. It's functional if you wanted to use a gloved finger, so that is going to be slick.
It also has a threaded bolt catch roll pin, so you can clean that really easy. I'm so glad they did that. I hate when you have to press that bolt catch pin in. One of the biggest pain in my rears I've ever done, so that's nice they do that. It also has a threaded takedown pin detent recess, so that's going to be slick as well for disassembly, stuff like that. If you wanted to swap out parts, all of those press pins and things that are a little bit difficult are going to be threaded. And again, everything is made in the USA, and most of this is actually made in-house, so they can control the tolerancing as well as the fit and finish of the entire thing. Also, a lot of these are going to be hand deburred. Most of the components are going to be hand deburred and hand fitted. So you know you're going to get a level of quality above and beyond what you would get from some huge factory turning out premium AR-15s. You're going to get that attention to detail that somebody's actually hand fitting and hand deburring parts, looking at every single one to make sure they've got quality components in every aspect. This one also comes with an ambidextrous safety, which is really slick, and one side is actually shorter than the other. So for those right-handed shooters, that's going to be good because it's not going to dig into your finger. A really nice touch. It also comes with anti-walk pins to hold the trigger into place, and we'll talk about the trigger more in a second. I really do want to discuss, though, the interface between the upper and lower assembly, as well as the interface with the user, and discuss a little bit about the buffer system that they're using inside here to kind of I'll have it all flow together and work very nicely. We've already talked about that compression pad in the front and how it eliminates the play between the upper and lower, but it also eliminates carrier tilt and lines everything up perfectly. And when you first saw this, you may say, oh, I've seen those little wedges that you stick in the back, but what that does is put pressure on the back of the lower and upper receiver, causing carrier tilt, and that can damage your buffer over time and cause problems with functioning of the rifle. This puts pressure on the front, aligning up the back, and that's a constant six pounds of pressure that's going to keep everything stable and it's going to prevent the carrier from tilting, allowing a perfect interface with the lower assembly to function great. So this is going to be a nice touch that's going to be added to this build. Such a cool design feature. The buffer spring itself is actually a chrome silicone buffer spring, and the buffer is going to be an H3 buffer. And we've already talked about all of these components that really transform this build, but we haven't talked about how they all work together. When we're looking at the gas system, when we're talking about the buffer spring and the buffer and the interface with the entire design, you get one of the smoothest shooting recoil impulses I've ever felt on an AR-15. And combine that with the muzzle brake, this is a joy to shoot down at the range. No recoil whatsoever. It's also very balanced. It feels nicely while it's firing. It's incredibly smooth and this allows you to just dump shots round after round. Double taps, triple taps, transitioning from target to target. This is a fluid rifle, and all of these components work together nicely, especially that trigger. So this is one of their zero triggers that they've included in their rifle, and you can either get the 3 or 4.5 pound pull weight. It's made out of A2 tool steel, the trigger itself, and then it's got a black nitrider MP3 finish, depending on what you select. The disconnector material is actually A2 tool steel, and then the disconnector finish actually has a black nitride or MP3 finish. The hammer material is S7 tool steel, then the finish of the hammer is black nitride or MP3, and then the housing material is going to be aerospace grade aluminum, and the housing finish is black anodized. That is a ton of specs and features that I've just rattled off, and you wanna learn more information, you can actually go to their website and learn more about the trigger. I'll probably be doing an independent review on it. But the cool thing about this is the way it operates and the way it was designed is there's zero pre and post travel, and it functions with zero interference. This is one of the nicest triggers I've ever seen, and you can purchase this independently. If you already have a premium build and you're looking to upgrade the trigger, this, again, is one of the nicest I've ever felt. Yet, guys, it's not the most expensive. I think they retail right about 205 to 255 depending on which version you select. And compared to some other triggers on the market, this is blowing them out of the water, and it comes in cheaper, but it is included in this lower assembly on this build, and I absolutely love it. In summary, guys, this was a lot of information to digest. But when you're spending $2,000 on your rifle, don't spend $2,000 on your rifle for some skeletonized finish in some weird paint scheme and a few different laser engravings. Pay $2,000 on a rifle that actually has engineering involved. 
they did not rehash an AR-15 and put some cool paint job and slap some components on it and charge a high price. They went through every single aspect of this rifle and radically transformed a lot of features to improve your shooting performance down at your range. This rifle works and it works well. I've got about 400 rounds through it and I want to give a huge shout out to Callaway Ballistics for supporting the channel. The Callaway Ballistics sent out a ton of ammunition for this review. I also shot a bunch of steel cased ammo and some precision ammo. But if you go to Callaway Ballistics website, you'll be able to get free shipping over $200 if you use the coupon code 704 Tactical. I was shooting a lot of Callaway Ballistics ammo through this, just their standard ammunition, and easily getting way under inch groups at 100 yards if I took my time. And then with precision match ammo, I could get even tighter groups. Although, guys, I did never technically bench rest this to see what it could shoot. I will be doing that in the future. But it's been just a great running rifle. It's well balanced it shoots nicely it's reliable and i've got the sig sour the tango six on the top of this guy so we're going to be doing a few review of this in the future that was sent out by optics planet so stay tuned for that very soon but overall guys i can highly recommend this rifle the real question is whether you want to spend two grand on a rifle uh, but i think this one is absolutely worth it again i want to give a huge shout out to blackout defense for sending this over to the channel for us to try out and if you decide to use that coupon code and purchase this rifle, a small percentage of the rifle sales go to help out the channel. So just know if you use that code, it does help out the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.